The purpose of this video is to tell you about the line of Fort Torpies. Fort Torpies doesn't exist anymore, but over the years it produced some amazing stories and I'd like to tell two of them. The base is named after a local monkey that used to collect the spent ammunition cartridges called Torpies. The base was very primitive. It featured a pub and a braai area and here we can see an oven constructed with elephant dung and clay. The base was so elementary it did not even include a perimeter fence. As a result of that, it featured the wild elephant that some of the men claimed to be tamed due to its frequently using the base as a shortcut to and from its watering hole, scaring any unsuspecting troops in the process. One of the advantages of being stationed here at Fort Torpes was that you never had to do any guard duties. The base employed a local garrison of guards of the indigenous Kwekwe community. The base commander received Teddy and his sister as a gift from the closest zoo in what was then Southwest Africa, now called Namibia. The zoo had too many big cats and decided to part with the pair of cubs. Initially a safari company was going to take them in, but deemed them a handful, so the Raki stepped in after hearing the plight of the lions. To this day, Terry is the only lion in the world that has ever become an honorary member of any special forces unit in the world. Terry and his sister lived on base free to roam. Remember, there's no perimeter fence. One day, Lisa went out to the bush and encountered the wild lioness and got severely injured during the encounter and she had to be put down, leaving Terry behind to terrorize the troops. Initially, the Rakis intended to rehabilitate the lions back into the wild. Terry did eventually have a pride of his own, but ultimately he lived his best life on base. He could often be seen on the back of a Land Rover, playing soccer with the boys, joining them on their five mile morning run and taking a bath at the local river. So by now you have an idea of what the base was like and what it was like living with a lion. This lion was basically a glorified dog. Now I want to get to the two stories I wanted to tell you. Whenever the base received new blood, it was always the newbie's responsibility to feed the lion. On one such an occasion, Terry could not be found and the rookie ventured off into the forest looking for Terry. After a while, he found our friend Terry, but Terry wouldn't budge to collect his meal. This absolute mad lad ranted and raved at the lion, trying to get it to get up, but it wouldn't budge. Eventually fed up, he started chasing it around and finally threw the meat at the lion. With his task complete, he decided he felt a bit peckish and, this, and swung by the mess hall, where he encountered Teddy sitting in the middle of the mess hall between all the troops waiting for his bone. He had went out into the bush, encountered the wild lion, chased it around and survived. At the time, the Rakis were regarded as some of the best in the world when it came to special forces and it's kinda understandable when you hear the story. Our second story involves some politicians visiting the space. Now normally, visitors to the space would be made aware of the lion's presence, but the army being apolitical and not liking the politicians that visited particularly resulted in the troops keeping the lion a secret from the visitors. The particular target of this prank was an individual known as Pevia Buata. He made some comments about how society should function that did not sit well with the troops, so they then decided to neglect the knowledge of the lion being present at the base. Mr. Buata happened to be the first that went out to the bathroom during the visit, and when he completed his business there and came out, he found the lion sitting right in front of the bathroom door, effectively trapping him inside the bathroom. Now, some troops claim to have heard some noises that sounded like yelling, but apparently this happened at the same time they turned up the volume to their radio. Eventually, the statesman's absence was noticed and a search party was sent out to look for him. Now, they ended up searching the opposite end of the base first, leaving him to be found at the very last possible moment. By that time, the lion had fallen asleep at the foot of the bathroom. Needless to say, these politicians never visited the base again. Salutes in the comment section for the troops, old and young. Thanks for sharing your stories. Thanks for watching. Please leave a like, ring the bell, subscribe, all that. Have a good one.